All right. So one of my favorite lessons is how to do a good slide deck. Um, PowerPoint is the name of the actual Microsoft product. Slide deck is what that PowerPoint actually is. And so um, I want to be clear, you are the presentation. The slide deck is a visual that goes along with what you say. Um, that's why I don't even like to use PowerPoint because because it was like PowerPoint presentation and people think that the PowerPoint is the presentation and that could not be further from the truth or farther from the truth. Um, my pet peeve is when I look at a PowerPoint or let's now call it a slide deck. When I look at a bunch of slides and there's so much wording on there, I just think, why not just email me the slide deck and I'll read it when I get a chance. And now I've got the information why do I need to sit there and listen to someone present and all they're really doing is reading off of slides? Mm -mm. What you're supposed to be doing is you are the person who is talking about the content and then the stuff that's in the backdrop behind, that's just there for visuals to add interest, to have an emotional impact. And, you know, if, if, let's just say the uh, internet or not the internet out, the power went out or whatever. And, and you just say, oh my gosh, like I don't have my, my slide deck. If you really know the material and if you're a really good speaker, you know, maybe it won't be as interesting or you lose some of the impact, but you still should be able to present without the slide deck. The slide deck just makes it better. So um, in this particular one that I'm, I'm talking about, we're getting ready to present on your poets. So in the background, I don't wanna see, you know, William Wordsworth was born, da 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 da. I can read that. It should have pictures. So if, if William Wordsworth was born in London in 1780, maybe you find a picture of London in 1780. Yeah, not photograph, picture. Picture, portrait, um, drawing or whatever of what it looked like or have a picture of him. Or if it's talking about his childhood, maybe you, you have some type of picture behind or there's maybe some graphics or, or whatever. So um, let me just share with you some examples of slide decks and do's and don'ts. Now I'm using PowerPoint only because PowerPoint is a little bit easier to use design features I highly suggest you use Google Slides because you cannot lose the stuff. But if you're more used to using PowerPoint, I'm, I'm okay with that since I'm actually using PowerPoint as an example. So let me, and actually I was doing this lesson a couple of years ago before I really leaned into the whole Google Suites. So that's why I have PowerPoint, but I've been using Google Slides now. They don't have as many features which maybe isn't such a bad thing because those features like the animations and the blinkies and transitions can get a little distracting. So even for that reason, I suggest using Google Slides. And again, you, you, you can't lose it that way, but still let me screen share and pull up the slide deck. You should be able to see that hopefully, right? So, let me go in the beginning, slide deck exemplar. This is what you should aspire to, to have your slides look like. You can use whatever style, whatever backgrounds, whatever formats. Um, I just use this one because I think it's pretty sleek. But if you look here, this is a great slide. You've got your title up top. You've got three main points and you have a picture. So the title up top anchors what you're gonna be talking about. You've got the three main points right here. You kind of wrap it up and notice that there's not many words. So if I just have um, the life and times or, or you know his childhood, or you just ha have the word up top childhood and you have um, London, uh, education and some other thing, or maybe his childhood, a poet's childhood in general was very 
um, tumultuous. It was uh, very difficult growing up. So maybe you could put lots of trauma or trauma filled, and then you explain, well, what were the difficulties? So keep it very simple. This is good when you are presenting information. Now, let's say you're doing a compare contrast, or you're trying to show like a relationship between two things, or you know the positives and the negatives, or this one versus that, or past versus present or future. Um, anytime you've got two things, I would back off on the words because because this is getting more complex. You're 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 trying to speak about two different topics. Just have two different pictures, and and then you can actually talk about the difference between the two. All right. So in this one, you know it's both pictures are about talking. The one is people, the other one are animals. The one looks like maybe they're a little negative. The other one looks like maybe they're gossiping. One is a drawing and the other one is a photo. So, you know, there's many different capabilities you have when you just have two pictures and you're talking about the relationship. Now, the other thing that I do is like the rule of 24. Font should be no smaller than 24 because then it starts to get too difficult to read. And you shouldn't really have more than 24 words on a slide. And I'm strict about that. And right here, I believe if you count all of those, that's 24 words, that is it. Now, if you have a picture there, I would have even fewer words because you wanna focus on the picture and not the words. But every now and then you might need to have a really important slide that is information rich, but look, that is it. Any more words per slide is very difficult to read and looks boring without graphics. So if you have one of these, you better follow it up with something that's visually interesting right afterwards. Now, here's another mistake people tend to do. Put in a whole bunch of pictures. And people think that that looks interesting and it pulls you in. And no, it really doesn't. What it does is when the person is talking and they're saying all this stuff, you're looking at all these pictures and you're like, oh, how does one relate to another? And, and look at this picture and that picture and all this other one. So yeah, the, the one slide before I have two pictures and maybe I can note it, there's, it's like for a specific reason. But the one here, obviously I did like four completely unrelated things on purpose, but it's still, people will do this when, when they're talking about maybe, you know, a moment in history, they're doing a presentation on, let's say the Renaissance, they have a picture of Shakespeare and they have a printing press and they have a scroll and, and it's like all these different things. And you're like, what is going on? And I'm either, my mind is either paying attention to the pictures, trying to like see the relationship and I'm not listening to you or I'm listening to you and not really looking at the pictures anyway. And then what's the point of having them there? So you should always have words coming out of your mouth with a picture that emphasizes it, emphasizes the theme and then um, words kept to a minimum on the slide just to emphasize what's coming out of your mouth. All right, here's another one, another example. Um, I don't know if I go into presentation mode. Let me see. Um, design, transition. How do I go into presentation mode here? Slideshow? And from current slide, does it do it? Yeah, yeah, okay. It, did, it didn't do it when I'm in the, the thumbnail preview, but check this out. If you have so many different things, it is going to take attention away from what you're talking about. So this is an example of what not to do. There's a graphic over here floating around. You've got some fancy fonts. You have another different font here, this text box. Now you have a picture and whoa, look at that, that infographic with, with, with the uh, moving the GIF or the GIF or whatever you call it. It's cool, but it's very distracting. Now let's say you really wanted to have this thing about the anxiety and depression make that the main thing on the slide, let people look at it, let them react, because they're gonna be like, oh, well, that's so cool. And then say, okay, so what do you think's going on in this, this GIF? Give them a time to think about it. And, and then you, you acknowledge it, you talk about it, the significance, you teach the content, and then you move on. Or maybe you just, it's always less is more. So 
one or two graphics, two at the most, if you're using those to compare, one graphic on a slide, keep the words to a minimum. I keep on saying the same thing over and over again because I want to make sure that you understand it. Oh, look at there. I also had that fly in. So see, you either missed it or you started paying attention to that and not what I was saying. So all those animations and spinny things keep to a minimum. Here's another thing too. Some people think they like to mix it up and change the backgrounds and all that stuff. But what that does is it just, whoa, that makes it very, it hurts the eyes after a while. Um, having a different color background each time, it, it actually creates some anxiety in the person. Not like true anxiety, like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. But neurologically speaking, or with, with the neuroscience, the person will always wonder like, I wonder what color is gonna come next? What's it gonna look like next? And that again is bringing attention away from you and your content. It's all about the content that you are presenting and different colors each time create like this surprise effect and oh, look at that, oh, look at that. You're paying more attention to the colors than you are to the presentation. Again, see that little spinny thing, it creates um, a pause, it's a distraction. That font is difficult to read, it's also too small. Now look at that, it's difficult to see. Be very careful with colors. There is a fairly high percentage, more than you would think, of people who are colorblind. And some people have some colorblindness and they don't even realize it because it's just a mild one. And some people might have a very difficult time seeing this. Other people might not, um, especially red and green, very bad color combination. Um, because those are the two that are, are most uh, colorblind people have. But you know, the, the purple and the orange right here, there's a contrast, but it's kind of obnoxious. And this one, the colors that are difficult to see, for me, that's difficult to see, even though I have very good color recognition. You can never go wrong with black and white or cream and really dark gray. Just keep it simple. Don't put so much effort on having a nifty slide deck. Be noticeable by what comes out of your mouth. I can't say that enough. And so again, here, let's come back to what, what works is something very simple like this. Maybe here, like I'm wondering this picture, what would I use this picture for? Time heals all wounds. Maybe I'm talking about um, setting goals and there's a timeline. Maybe there's, I'm seeing there's an ouch with the Band-Aid. Oh, it says time heals all wounds is right there. Didn't even see that word written there. So, you know, if you have a picture that emphasizes what you are saying, keep it simple. This is the type of slide deck you should be making. You do that. And then when you record your presentation using a slide deck like this, it's going to come to life. People will want to listen to you and not just read a bunch of slides. Have fun with this. If you have any questions, always come and reach out to me. But just remember, keep it simple, no more than 24. Pictures, only one or two, three main points at the most. And remember to keep your um, resources at the end. I don't have any resources because I was the resource. This is not anything that um, I got anywhere on the internet. This is me having seen lots of bad slide decks. And when they work, they really work. You know, another good place to go and see good examples of slide decks, TED Talks. If you look at TED Talks where they've got 18 minutes to talk about their topic, some of them don't even have a slide deck at all. And if they do, they use it for effect. I might even find um, a good TED Talk that gives it a good example of effective slide decks. Again, have fun and looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Bye.